going on you guys my name is rage and we are back today with another top five characters free to play in the game right now for marvel strike force at the time recording it is in december so uh, keep in mind as the changing meta continues uh, we can always have these characters fluctuate in and out but i've taken the chance to kind of review the roster right now in terms of the characters that provide a lot of value to the free to play community and as well who you can farm up um pretty much immediately or to the mid game transition but as well a couple notable things for this analysis um i like to exclude the premium or and as well as the milestone orbs just because you know to me they're not actually farmable there's a chance involved and and uh you know that like unlikelihood and likelihood creates a division in terms of whether or not it is actually fair when you want to farm for them so i have excluded that and on as well um everyone's aware that the war store is usually heavy coveted in terms of the number of characters that are included here as you can see carnage x23 bishop all really good in their own way but um this war store creates too much diversions in terms of us creating a fair analysis so i've also excluded this um so that being said it does rule out now uh, mainly all the campaign characters and as well mainly the blitz and raid store uh, being farmable as well as arena so that being said let's get this party started starting off with the top five free to play characters here it is gamora you know i like to assess whether or not the meta is still relevant for her infinity watch and currently right now it is uh you know her team has definitely lost place in the arena but gamora still remains one of the top characters in the game for the offensive output the synergy she has with the infinity watch and keep in mind as well even though they've fallen out of the top meta in the game um they've remained quite relevant in all other aspects you know i'm still using infinity watch really to auto attack the alpha and beta raids um, I'm using her as well in Dark Dimension 3 and Dark Dimension 4 as a team to try out, and they're very feasible still. So, um, especially if you're newer to the game and you're looking for good value to push a team through Dark Dimension 3 and Dark Dimension 4, I would still highly recommend building the Infinity Watch because they're going to save you materials in the long term as opposed to building uh, cosmic characters that you're no longer going to use following Dark Dimension. So, 100%, I would still recommend Gamora. And on top of that, um, she's really available in the game in terms of being accessible through the Blitz. So as an early player, you're going to have access to it right away and building one of the highest offensive damage output characters in the game at a low cost with the Blitz store. Um, I think that's great value there and it's going to allow a lot of players to grow uh, faster than they would have otherwise. Next, I'd like to talk about the recommendation now here of being Spider-Man Symbiote. Yes, the new Web Warriors are coming to the game, but Spider-Man Symbiote here is still remains one of the best uh, city and bio characters in the game. Uh, he's almost Dark Dimension required just due to the fact that he's got an extension of his abilities to extend negative conditions. Uh, he's got a handy stun and as well that passive to actually grant all of his fellow symbiotes the 100% drain plus. You know, that really provides a lot of value. The reason I like him is because he is farmable officially now in the game. Unfortunately, it is the last node of the game, but hopefully that changes perhaps in the future. With him being readily available, he has to be in this discussion of being top 5 free to play just because of him being so versatile. Um, he's more than just being involved in Dark Dimension. A lot of players would have originally used him and his team, Doom 1 raids, and now the Doom 2 raids currently is where I'm using them to get the coveted Teal Orb. So for sure, a heavy fan favorite, but he makes the list now officially just due to the fact that he's officially farmable and out of the orbs. Next, a huge addition to the game, and this really kind of created waves beginning uh, just because of the Secret Avengers uh, being a heavy meta now in the Doom 2 raids, but as well as Captain Sam just being such a versatile character. Uh, he, look at all his upgrades across the board here. I did not hesitate to upgrade him, and main reason being is there's not many characters in the game that can actually grant and generate energy, and on top of that, provide those buffs to his fellow allies, and also in addition, he actually impacts his speed and turn meter. So you can see here, especially if it's skill allies which uh, for the time right now he's currently really heavily used in doom 2 raids skill nodes uh, he's always going to be able to provide that benefit regardless if he's part of the secret avengers or not um, anytime you have a character that has those advantages in gaining the turn meter and speed advantage you bet they're going to be uh staying here for quite a while you know um i would say heavily offense characters such as gomora may lose their place as stronger characters come out but characters defensively like captain sam sherry as a legendary they're going to hold their place stronger long term just due to those synergies and support that they can provide for the team because those are the intangibles that we look for so a huge addition i do highly recommend you can see here he's available in only doom chapter 2 6 so very feasible um you can get him mid game you know he's readily available and can provide a lot of value just due to how powerful he is and the synergy of the skilled secret avengers 
Next, uh, synergizing with Captain Sam. I've noted here it's going to be Sharon Carter. Uh, again, um, the Secret Avengers became one of the strongest teams to come out. They're readily available, and currently right now there is three of them. So, I mean, um, is this a hint potentially in the future where they could be used as a legendary unlock? You know, that's definitely a possibility for the time being. But uh, as you can see, Sharon Carter is not as powerful as the counterpart of Captain Sam. But the reason she's on the talk there in discussion is because uh, she has very useful abilities. You know, she's got an ability block and defense down for two turns and also applying defense down, which is beautiful. Um, she's got a handy stun as well. And, and on top of that, clearing positive buffs with the slow. So, I mean, this is very useful in the Doom Raids. Um, think more actively Dr. Doom. You know, she's got one of the abilities that can shut him down. Although he can't be stunned, the ability block buys us time to prevent Dr. Doom in the raids to actually use his ultimate, and that's really useful. Uh, as well, even her basic and being able to actually reduce the speed bar, again, back to that turn meter discussion, anytime you have a character that has that advantage, they're going to be able to add a lot more value in the long term for the game. So, um, Sharon Carter's got some very useful skills. Uh, this ability acts like Ghost where they reduce the speed meter by having her as a striker ISO 8. Uh, she can be able to duplicate that and really control the enemy turn meter and prevent them from having a turn. So uh, for that reason, um, she's definitely in the discussions here. On top of that, icing on the cake is that she's actually a raid character. So um, in my opinion, the order of the supply store usually is Blitz, Raid, arena and then the war store so for raids um second most readily available in my opinion just because we get a lot of orbs uh we got a lot of fragments for that to actually spend so sharon card is very available um as you can see pushing her to seven right now if i can just farming away but a uh, top five in favor in my opinion and will add a lot of value right now in the short term and as well the long term if you can get your hands on her last but not least this is actually the Dark Horse now being part of a new and developing meta. So uh, perhaps this video you watch maybe a little bit later in the Web Warriors, you can see it more in live action. But uh, for sure, making that forefront is the Spider-Man rework here in anticipation of the new movie, which I might add. So, I mean, it's exciting times for sure. You can see he's heavily not invested right now just because, to be fair, um, you know, his team, he didn't really belong on a team and uh, they didn't really have a place in the game as well. So with the rework, the biggest changes are the fact that he has an increase in Dodge chance, but as you can see here, uh, the big notable addition is the fact that he's going to be trying to replace the symbiotes in the Doom raids, and I think that's going to happen likely, just because you can see here one of the notable effects that he has is in raids when a negative impact is applied to an enemy. Uh, he's also going to apply random positive effects to the Web Warriors. On top of that, they're also going to get a chance to actually increase the speed bar uh, with the dodges. So like I said earlier, speed is the name of the game. And when you can have that increase and that advantage over the enemies, for sure, you're going to add value for the long term. On top of that, um, his basic now has additional chances to also uh, increase his evasion. So, I mean, there's just going to be a boatload of evasions, which then in turn increase the turn meter. And as well, he's also going to be granting positive buffs. So for sure... Um, He's a, a very similar uh, to Gamora, available in the Blitz store. So this makes him one of those dark horses that are readily available right from the get-go. And for sure, adding a lot of long-term now, especially uh, if you're building the Web Warriors and intending to replace the old the OG symbiotes in the Doom Raids. But as well, I think they're going to have a lot of uh, value on other aspects of the game as well, just because of the reworks and them getting the needed buffs that they deserve. So um, that is the five characters I do believe right now, the top five free to play. Um, definitely get a chance to farm them up if you can, you guys, because I think they're here to stay for a bit. Um, even if Infinity Watch and Gamora losing their place, she's still going to have a lot of value, especially if you're a newer player. So that being said, always do appreciate you guys sharing on my videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.